Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. You are watching a Fact TV presentation of the Town of Grafton Select Board Meeting. <laughs> A motion to adopt the agenda as presented. So moved. Any discussion on the agenda? If not, all the things are on. Aye. Opposed? Okay. We have the minutes of the regular meeting on my first and second, 2023. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes that have been done? No. If there is no one, we have a motion to. Approve and second. Second. No further discussion. All in favor of approving the minutes as presented on first and second, please say aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Aye. Right. Okay. okay. So we have budget right there. Would you like to go, Michelle? Okay. <laughs> It means really you can put yeah. them down if they want yeah. to. I made copies of the pro forma budget for everybody. So this one. Yep. And, and then, then um so I made copies of the pro forma budget for all of you. And then I made you I made one copy of sort of the breakdown of what we did last year, what we did, what we're planning to do for the rest of this year and then next year in terms of the building. Um because that's our one of our biggest expenses right now. And then this is a copy for you of the building assessment. That we had in terms of energy efficiency plus also infrastructure and maintenance uh, so we had somebody come down so this is a full report i thought maybe it'd be good for y'all to have a copy of that too yeah, um, just okay. on record great um, thank you but i just made one copy of that so i wasn't using a whole bunch of paper yep. um, so what is it most helpful um, for us to go over for you um what what do you what do you want to what, 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 here's, here's what you know what you what you like to where you been live. Okay. okay. Um that's what I figured, but I just want to make sure. Uh, so we are I think we're at yeah, we're definitely at seven thousand five hundred um now and we're asking to go to eight thousand five hundred. Um and this is uh almost completely due to the work that we're doing on the building. Um we have that report done in August, and as we sort of already knew, there has been a lot of deferred maintenance, and um, it, it, and the board is now um, doing the due diligence to take care of it. So, just very briefly, in two thousand fiscal year two thousand twenty three, um, we completed the interior painting of the circulation room and the reading room, and we insulated the basement. And the re only reason we were able to insulate the basement is the money that Liz Bankowski um, directed toward the library when she um, retired from the board of the Women Foundation. Um, she gave us a grant and then we used that grant money to go forth and raise money for heat pumps. But when we did the inspection, when we had the assessment done, they told us the energy efficiency, they told us that the building wasn't even close to tight enough um, to have heat pumps work at all. So we're working away on insulating the basement, the two attics, and then taking care of the rest of the deferred um, maintenance. Um, it turns out that we may need to have the asphalt, asphalt roof reshingled as well. It's probably done maybe almost 30 years ago. We're not even, it's not even clear when it was last done. So, and of course that will impact any insulation we need to have done in the attic underneath. So for the next, the rest of, rest of this fiscal year, we have enough money um, from uh, the capital campaign that we, because Liz wanted us to raise an additional matching amount and Liz's amount to probably completely finish insulating both attics. It will depend upon um, what what the cost of our, our everything when we bid it, when we put it up to bid. But we should have enough um, to do, but we still need to do in 2025, the roof, the porch is showing some real issues. There's a rotted board on the porch, and that's causing the slats as you enter in the door, right at the door, to buckle up, which is a safety issue coming in and out of the library. And 
And then we have a fire escape door, which doesn't close properly. And it has rock all around it on the second floor, which is the only exit out, only door out. That has to be taken care of because that's also a safety issue. Um, and then there's some rock and some upheeling on the southern side of the building, paint and that sort of stuff. Well, Kathleen and I were talking about when we met Monday and we were saying, it, oh, we're glad we have this report from Burlington, but it feels almost a little overwhelming to us to be dealing with. A lot, a lot of the buildings, but the, this board has got a great plan for working through it little bit by little bit. And we are very fortunate to have the money from Liz and then the responding mm -hmm. donations from the town, um, from the people in the town to get us started on um, finishing up all of the insulation. And then we'll be able to come back around and look at heat pumps again. And it's unclear whether we'll really, we might have to go to grant money to the state. There is apparently some grant money that's going to be coming down the pipe to the Department of Libraries in terms of doing infrastructure, but that hasn't been determined yet. So we would definitely apply, be applying to that for heat pumps if we get the building tightened up enough. But right now, we're looking, even without heat pumps, we're looking at insulating the two attics, which we think we can handle with no additional funds. But then we've got the porch, the fire escape door, and then the painting in the back of the building so we don't have additional rot there. And then some other minor things, like you would recommend, like adding, switching out windows, little white and all the subsequent. Yeah, the pops. we're losing a lot of heat through that, but that's that's very expensive. And then the other thing is that um, when uh, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns um, assessment was done, they really would like us to address um, a number of electrical issues and then. Um, uh, a sort of an alert system in case the building were to catch on fire, which we've never had before. And so we haven't even begun to deal with that yet. There, I know they when we had the inspection done, he told us there might be a little bit of state grant money available for that, but we're still trying to find a certified electrician to come and take a look at it all um, and get that taken care of. So it's all it's building, 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 building right now, trying to keep that historic building in good repair and get it tightened up even more in terms of energy efficiency. Like I reported last year, we are having great results from the donation of the panel and a half of the solar power um, from the solar site in Cambridge Court. He brought down our electric bill. It was never that high. He brought it down. From, it brought it down from about fifty-five to sixty a month down to 23, 24. So if we ever can get tight enough to have heat pumps work in there, that's great that we have that solar panel and a half that's been donated to us. And that feeds into Green Mountain Power uh, build. But right now, we've been told that heat pumps are not going to be effective in the building because it's still too late still. Um, so, um, so that's, that's where we're at. And that's what we're looking at. So in essence, you want to have not increase. Exactly, yeah. And if you have any more questions about um, work that's planned and work that's, work that's being completed and where we're at in terms of what's left over from the capital campaign, um, I did a, a sort of a bullet list on that. I've given it to Morgan. And I can also, Morgan, send that to you all that's through my great. email. Yeah. So you can just review it. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. We must also when step in the building for fire codes. Like that alarms and stuff. Yeah, that would be the Vermont League of Cities and Towns that does that. Um, it's because we're covered through the town's insurance. Um, you you, re, you bill us for that, and we then we pay you for it. But we're we're covered. The whole building is covered through the Vermont League of Cities and Towns insurance. And do you have anybody in general that just does some general repairs for you? Since you. That we are now looking for another handyman because um, uh, one of our board members had somebody who had done some minor work and he's not able to do it anymore physically. So I just actually spoke with Steve Nolan because he's very skilled and he just doesn't have the time to do it. He gave me a couple of names and then uh, maybe reaching out to a few more people. It is definitely a need for us right now. We're having a ticket at a time finding an electrician. Because the board wants them to be um, able, they have to be a master electrician. So they want them to be able to get the permit from the state. Uh, so, uh, and in town, Linton, Dust Plumber doesn't qualify, or Alec doesn't want to do it. So, um, we have to look elsewhere. Interesting. Thank you.
But if anybody knows of anybody who's a really decent handyman who can handle the sort of the most complicated repairs on porch, um, because of course, we have to be careful with that because we don't know how much of the support of that uh, that second balcony is is taken on by the pillar of the pillar. Did you uh, contact uh, Rodriguez? I think the town. Yes, that's one of the people who's on my list to call. How you think to repair any And you have a good result with you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's Mary Ann Donald mentioned to me as well. I'm going to be reaching out to him. Yeah, and I'm assuming he's insured. We have to hire somebody who's insured. Yeah. Well, so yeah, you can say for That's great, thank you. Yeah, that's good because that was one of my to do lists for this week is to reach out to him. So I, I, I'm assuming. Then we want to get a approval from the board, or do we want to wait the next time for that increase? We usually will go over it the next time with the land other ice. So we will take your increase and we will be meeting in, in some time in late October. Okay, yeah, thank you. And then I apologize, but I've got I I've got to go. I oh no, no, it's fine. Hard for me. No, thank yeah. you for coming. Okay. 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 Can you see it from the fire? Oh, thank you, Bill. How was your um, set? Good. Was it successful? Yes, it was one of the very good. Um, so, that's the question that we have put together. Voted on by the membership yet, but I don't feel like to see any changes with it. Um, so if you look down through on the 24 25 columns, it's level funded, same as last, last two years. Um, and then to the right of that is the graph that supports. So if you go down to each line item, it says where. What that 29950 is going for, all those columns add up. And as of January 1st, we did start um, there was in town of Athens, so there's a line there for what Athens is doing, not so what their meaning is going for us to do. Um, it averages out that Athens is about a fifth of the calls of drafting, so every all of their figures are a fifth of the drafting figures to make everything. Fair and legit um, for everybody. So basically, everything is level funded from last year. Happy to ask you answer any questions if you got any. So, do you think I'm last year? Yeah. Yeah. Last two years. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions of Angela Robin? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I Thank you. Thank you. That was easy. And Reggie. Mm -hmm. If it's okay, I'm going to hijack uh, five minutes of your time. Uh, Oh, can you pass it? Or you gave off the budget. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. yeah. I haven't, but I will. It's right here. Yeah. All right, Abby, let's get you a. So, um, yeah, I, it's, it's not a, uh, this is not a setup, but um, so I, I was appointed to uh, the Vermont Regional EMS Coordination Study, which is uh, an ongoing project that started mid year uh, with a report to the legislature that's uh, due to December 1st. And I'm representing uh, the first response. 
agencies in the state of Vermont. And uh, as we've been going around and listening to um, what folks are saying about uh, the, the challenges of EMS in their various areas, it occurred to me we don't have at least a quick conversation about what's going on with EMS in, in Grafton on a regular basis. So if it's okay, I'm just going to grab a couple of minutes and just talk about what's uh, sort of the state of Grafton Rescue. I put it in the, uh, the annual letter that goes into the town report, but uh, I thought it might be a, a worthwhile quick conversation. So if you um, you know if you pay attention to the various news outlets uh, around the country and within Vermont. Uh, emergency medical services is under a lot of stress in the country. You have uh, services that are closing uh, within Vermont. You have services that are trying to transition from volunteer to uh, pay. You have uh, challenges in terms of recruiting uh, professionals and competition uh, across different agencies. So, uh, you know, basically, it's it's a uh, un unstable patient. I guess if I was writing a patient care report. Uh, you know, fortunately for us, we don't have those issues. Um, so the couple of challenges that we, we do have within Grafton, um, which we talk about within our squad pretty regularly, is we don't we don't lack for number of people. What we lack for right now is level of people. So uh, we are an advanced level provider uh, within the state licensing scheme, which means that we can do some advanced life support things that uh, other providers cannot do. About 10% of our calls require that level of care or getting that level of care right now. Uh, and currently we only have two folks that are uh, licensed at that level. So, um, you know, we talk about it in the squad, making sure that we have some you know, plans or at least uh, keep people motivated to move on to that. Um, but, you you know, again, it's a stressor within uh, providing care within the community. That would be one that within a couple of years, uh, when I don't get up in the middle of the night to go to call it, uh, or Rachel, uh, that, that would be an issue, but uh, we're working on that. Uh, the other potential stress that we have is our primary ambulance service. So even though that we often don't have a challenge, um, Golden Cross, which is our primary ambulance service, does have some challenges. So all the things I was talking about originally in terms of staffing and recruiting and uh, retaining people um, and just staffing up to the appropriate level of calls. Uh, you know, basically, and that's calls are up. You know, nationally, just more people are relying on us. Um, so, about seven percent of the calls that we have in Grafton, where we've contracted with Golden Cross, are covered by mutual you know, mutual aid. That means that uh, Golden Cross would say that they don't have an ambulance available, and the call will go to either Rescue Aid or Chester, typically. Our neighbors in Saxon River and to the east of us are actually getting occasional service by Walpole. Um, so there is stress in the system, you know, at, at that end. I know that they're aware of it, they're trying to work through it. Um, but those are the two places where I see Grafton having you know some issues that we just need to be uh, conscious of. I put here a, a link. Um, so this uh, coordination study is inviting input from you know, town representatives, community members, you know, basically anybody who thinks they have something to say. Um, I put the link into this uh, this sheet here, the town, or anybody would like to make a comment. Um, folks in the audience or online who don't have access to this link can uh, drop me an email at craftandrescue at vermonttel.net. I will provide that to them. They can also come to Morgan and get a start to well. Perfect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We do have uh, two members uh, that are uh, within our squad that are working their way through the EMT course to elevate themselves from the, uh, the place that they're at currently, which is a good thing. And we have one uh, registered nurse in town who's actually working their way through the EMT challenge. So potentially by spring next year, we'd have three additional EMTs um, on, on board uh, up from their basic license that we have currently. Uh, we absorbed, uh, as, as Robbie mentioned, uh, you know, we both were in the same boat here. We've absorbed uh, coverage for Athens really with no issues. Uh, I think none of us are really sure how that was all going to play out. Um, I've pulled some call statistics this morning. You can see that basically 98% of the calls in the two communities are getting two or more people, which is ideal. Uh, we've covered all our calls, so the other 2% ended up having one person. 
And those might have been things that were fairly innocuous, I'm thinking in terms of maybe lift assist or something like that. 84% uh, of our calls end up with four or more members. So we've got a pretty active crew. If you call 911, there's a good chance you will have too many people as opposed to not enough. Uh, licensing for the squad is on a three year cycle. We just went through a renewal and were approved. Um, I just put this down there, just, you know, it's never mentioned, but just so that you know. Um, the, the, the state is uh, enforcing background checks on our members. That's always been the case that they asked for that to happen, but they're going to uh, be pushing us to do this. So uh, people when their license go through both a criminal and uh, an abuse uh, background check, and this will now be done on a uh, biannual basis so that people showing, again, showing up at your door also have uh, some level of clearance for these sorts of things. And uh, the final uh, bullet, uh, just in terms of what's going on, we have a, our rescue vehicle is now at uh, 15 plus years, which is technically the end of the serviceable life. And uh, we formed a truck committee and have started to look at options for uh, either replacing or remounting the, uh, the, uh, the back end of that vehicle. Um, you know, you'll note from our financials, we have a pretty substantial reserve and that uh, most of that came from more uh, you know, over generosity by the community when we purchased the first truck and we've added to it over the course of time, but we expect um, all of that will be used to uh, to make the purchase of the replacement vehicle. So that's sort of a state of the union. Uh, if anybody has any questions, otherwise I'll move into the budget. All right. So in terms of the uh, the budget, the highlight that I want to hit were uh, but basically, we've moved to, for us, the simplest way to do this is just to have a consolidated uh, or an integrated uh, budget. So basically, the way we've done this is we've taken the cost of, uh, or our estimate of the cost of operations. Um, we estimate what proportion of that is going to be covered by donations um, from the community. And then we uh, divide the remaining expenses across the towns uh, per capita. And uh, per capita tends to be a pretty reliable uh, measure in the EMS world in terms of how, uh, how we're going to be called. Um, so that seems like a, a fair way to do it. Um, we're extending our fundraising activities to the Athens community, uh, and we've upped our estimate for overall um, donations by about $2,000, so we're counting, counting on that. Uh, you'll see in the budget we have a uh, grant from the Poly Family Foundation. Um, those that money is going to be used uh, for these EMPs that I was talking about, about before to equip them with uh, uh, jump bags and in the high visibility jackets, as we we have for the rest of the squad through a, a kind of a similar grant a few years ago. Uh, we have a slight increase in medical expenses that has gone up, um, you know, fairly steadily over the course of time, as you can appreciate. Uh, we're, we're always happy to get supplies. So actually, uh, how much they cost is usually not the issue. It's just um, you know finding a source for them and, uh, and getting them. Uh, we have for our education. So we, we have these three folks going to EMP pro programs. Um, the good news is the state was able to get some money to do uh, tuition vouchers. So the, those classes are free to the squad, which is nice, which is why that number is being bumped up there. Um, the last item was um, we decided to hire a bookkeeper and take that responsibility away from the treasurer. Um, and, and I was sort of the, um, the person sort of pushing for that. Um, you know, those two things are sort of a little bit at, at odds because a uh, person that you have for treasurer, you want them to be sort of an advisor in terms of, you know, how do we raise money? How do we, uh, you know, how do we uh, budget correctly? You know, how do we control our assets? And the booking keeping job is something that's more, um, you know, mechanical. So by you know, hiring a bookkeeper, uh, kind of can disconnect disconnects those two things, and allows the treasurer to kind of focus on the things that we want them to focus on. But also makes the position a little more attractive down the road because the person who's going to be the treasurer doesn't have to say, "Well, you know, I'd love to advise, but I I really don't want to be spending you know a couple hours every month doing uh, doing checks." So those are the highlights in terms of um, what we've done to the budget. I should have started with the punchline. So the punchline is, is that basically we're not asking for an increase 
uh, we're asking for uh, level funding as, uh, at the same rate that we have for the past uh, two years at $4,500. Question. Um, yeah, I have a question on the RN on the EMP and the possibility to shift go to or he to go to um A. You know, we've had a that's a good point. We we've, we've had a discussion uh or two, so we're still trying to um figure that out. Um you know, I, I think people have been to you know saying, but maybe not in the ER environment might have some reservation about you know, what they've done or that stuff, but we are discussing so that that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you for your support. Go ahead. Can I just say one thing about our production coming out of it? On the line 19 PPE equipment, there's a big negative there in the friendship 13 cents in the turnout year, um, which would have been in the last year's fiscal year, but we've got grant money covered for it and being in this fiscal year. So it'll show up next year, but it looks like a big yeah, it's, So if you're looking down through it, you know, what's not, that's a big thing. Okay. All right. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. I thank you. 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 Other than that, it's not going to be an insider. Can we buy all that now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. It's such a pleasure to go to Chester now. Don't complain, you're passing. Anybody have any questions on the site? Yeah, you're on it. Did you have anything? I don't know. Are there in the second quarter of taxes on that in the November 15th? We need a money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
there was a I'll find it. Oh, here it is. Well, it's in the mm -hmm. Okay, grant agreement. At Monday's meeting, we'll need to have a motion to approve the attached grant agreement and to appoint someone to have signing authority. Yeah, what day was that? that was on Wednesday the 11th. That's for the 3.9 million. Yeah, but the board hasn't seen all this stuff. I mean, we can't deal with that now. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just put it on their next meeting. Is there a deadline? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think there's anything. Then no with September, September 30, 2026. Is when they awarded. I don't think there's any question. Yeah, there's not. We'll just do it next week. There's not. We're great. Um, we'll go on. Hey, Kathy has a question. Oh, good. Sorry. Um, if you're not going to, I know we're not going to lie. But yes, we're still we're still talking about that because that has to do with the PFAS issue. Yeah. So they still that's something we're still talking about is putting these carbon filters in everybody's house in the village. That school has one right now, but that will filter out the PFAS. But there's a problem because um one of the agencies say that PFAS is in everybody's water. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about it. So yeah. you don't need to. So there's one group that's saying we need it, and another group of state feds say we don't need it. So I don't know what the answer is. I don't think that's, you know, we're not we're not there to see what that point is. I don't know do that or not. And I think that's why I asked that question, and they didn't have an answer. About yeah. putting yeah. But what state the state? The wastewater people and the drinking water people have totally different understanding yeah. of what needs to happen. Yeah. That's the best way to put it. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um <clears throat> I know it was I think you asked the question John about um the um, short term rentals. Well we have a we have a, a proposed ordinance here uh, that we would like to move forward on. So, do you want to explain it? Sure. Sure. So, this is a draft ordinance, and it's based on, it's largely based on Chester's ordinance. Um, but basically, it lays down basic minimum requirements that need to be done if you're going to have a an Airbnb. Um, you have to meet things actually you're supposed to be doing anyways. Uh, essentially, you need to make sure your the, your property is safe, meet certain fire safety, safety checklists, a general health checklist. You, know, you should have smoke and carbon monoxide alarms uh, in every room. Uh, you know, appliances are in good repair. You're cleaning the rooms before guests. Uh, come into the rooms. There's not rodents in the rooms. Um, one thing what I added in after Joe and I talked was uh, there's a worry that um, these bigger rental units will have uh, over the septic systems will be overused. Uh, and there would be, if you have more than eight occupants, and your within your rental unit, you'd have to have your septic tank pump every once every two years, as opposed to once every four years. There's also in this would be a registration fee. So every year you'd have to fill out this application, file it with Morgan or the town administrator, basically, and you have to pay the application fee that goes along with it. Uh, and it's a different fee if you live here or if you don't live here uh it's 150 dollars per year for hosted rentals so if you live here 
uh, at the rental site, it's $150 per year. If you don't, it's $300 per year. That's the application fee. And then there's also um, uh, fines associated with violations of the ordinance, uh, which are, the way they're strapped right now are much lower than how they did it in Chester. Actually, it's $25 per day for the first offense, $50 per day for a second offense, $100 per day for a third offense, then $250 per day, plus a 12-month revocation with a person's ability to operate their short-term rental within Grafton for 12 months. That's a broad outline of the ordinance as it is currently drowned. I have I have reviewed it and I had a different set. I think the fee of $150, $300 too low. I would like to see $300 for people who live here and $500 for them. But that's just my people. I just copied, well, that's copied from Chester. Anyone have any comments about uh, the long term or long term? Go ahead. Well, obviously, I have an interest in this. Um, I run a VRBO single occupancy apartment above my farm in the village, and um, nobody's ever complained as far as I know. I'd like to know why the rate would be the same for somebody who's got, I don't know, eight bedrooms versus somebody like me. Why do you think that's fair? It's hosted. If it's a hosted rental, if you live at the place that you're renting out, that is uh, as opposed to if you don't. And most people, they're renting out an eight bedroom rental. They don't live at the place. You know, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the answer. Sure. The fee being um, subject to size, and then it's not size. Hosted. Oh, or unhosted. Hosted. Hosted means if you live there and you rent out your rooms, that's one fee. If you rent out your rooms, it's another fee. Yeah. So the hosted fee is lower than the, than the non the non host fees higher. And the yeah, we're, we're getting a new ordinance is for the safety of people visiting the community. Is that the reason, or is it a price gap? Is it what? I've heard of you know income losing for the. You know, I, I, think, I think for I think it's a couple of reasons. Um, one obviously is to ensure that the the uh, rentals are big. For the, whoever's renting that, and, and and an opportunity for the town to monitor and to uh, understand who who is in the business. That's all. Yeah. Okay. So the money you're generating for this application, what exactly is it for? Just to create a revenue for the town, but you're not really having an expense. Well, it's just a pretty well, it is an expense because you're gonna have. There's going to be certain things the town's going to have to do to so the fire module. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to make sure that the septic system is there. Morgan's um, going to keep track of this thing. Yeah, there's certain expenses. There will be an expense because that the administrator will have to keep track of the paperwork. They're going to have to make sure that the ordinate, the, you know, the septic is being pumped like it's supposed to be. But isn't that the normal what would be under a town administrator or are you going to hire somebody separate? No, if we can appoint, you can appoint. The way Chester did it is they appointed a short-term rental administrator, which was, I think they just used their time administrator to do it. So we can, but it's just, it's added work on your time administrator. So, so there is added work involved in it. Well, it's just like the septic tank ordinance. You know, we don't have someone who, we don't have a police force out there enforcing it. There doesn't really be a lot of work on top of it. Is it really want to do the right? Well, there is yeah. certain number of them. You play with the towel, you play with the fire alarm. Well, no, but you, know, you would call the fire alarm, and the fire alarm could be a lot. Well, right. Put it live. They're supposed to do this anyway. They were both to do yeah. the CIP yeah. so yeah. I do that. Under the uh, under under the state of Vermont, you're supposed to. This is a, this form is pulled from the state of Vermont. Right. So there's oh, I, I mean, obviously, you're gonna have to rely just like what we do with the septic pump ordinance. We have to rely on people being good citizens. Well, like I said, you do, to know, some extent, something like this that has to be enforced on a lot of uh, really, I mean. Uh, and it's a big job for someone. 
And we even had the town health officer job. I mean, it's really, I mean, some of this would probably rely on his shoulder, but the, uh, uh, you know, the way that position works, the profit, if you will, uh, it was important enforcement. One thing that's easy, one thing is easy to enforce with this. We can look online and see if someone's running a house out or not. No. That's easy. That's easy. It's, it's just that. It, and then they turn in this application. If, if, if you're going to, if you're saying it for the safety of the people, uh, that's that fine. Uh, but again, they should have fire alarms are all set and my fingers are there. Uh, this should be quite expensive. And you're going to do it on a yearly basis. Well, I hope you say it and do it. No, no, no chance. Not a chance. Not a chance. Just to piggyback on what Mary said, which then we other things back on the other but in terms of inspections, doesn't it take more time, obviously, for bigger houses and bigger options? This is, but the, it's not uh, the way the way the Chester ordinance, yeah, the way this ordinance is set up, the, they're verifying they're doing all these things and returning the center. We're not going out and inspecting the houses. Yeah, that's not this how this is set up. That's now check the record. It's these people in their renting the house, they're verifying us, they're doing all these things, they sign it, and they turn in their form. So those fees are just kind of fixed regardless. Yes, so and if they're if, if someone calls in, like say a renter goes there, I rented at this house, there were no fire alarms, the place was filthy. Then we could then at that point, yes, the health officer or the fire worker or any member of the select board. Go in and check out that they are. Was there a violation of that right? Has that happened? Uh, we don't have the ordinance here, so I have no idea. <laughs> Obviously <laughs> not. <laughs> we don't have that ordinance. Good. I wondered if anybody made a call. That was the question. Yeah, the, complaint the complaints, yeah. <laughs> the complaints are when people come to hear. And I'm not saying it on the guess, but I just realistically, I think the whole situation that okay you're going to try to enforce something like this I mean, I, it, well, I mean we're talking about the same thing about the speeding and everything we're talking about if you're not going to and like i said i'm not advocate one way or not but if you're not going to give the sheriff's department more money to enforce the speeding then why bother well i think i think that one of the things well this is kind of fall that to do that as an example this this fall underneath the same thing <laughs> And if it's just for trying to put people on notice that don't live around here, then wait 150 bucks for the people I do. If this, if this is what the motivation is to put the people that don't live here that own the property to put them on notice, the people that do live here that do contribute to the town, then wait the fee for them. And maybe instead of a $300, maybe a $500 people that are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can understand for that all this is going to help for the citizens in the following up and the fine, but I don't understand why you would want to charge them for the application. It's a business they're running, and it's not like any business you open up the store doesn't have any fees that they have to pay the tax. But it can go by certain rules. I understand the ordinance, I understand the ticket. But to actually have you're tapping into their business for what reason? That I, I don't know the agree with the fee that you want to charge on a yearly basis. Well, we just talk to the town. Um, I think one of the biggest things is that these folks register with the town yeah. if they have an Airbnb. But when we get complaints coming in from Morgan or a camp or one of the select board members to say, well, there's problems with noise, or there's problems with too many people in the house, or there's a party, or there's traffic, a traffic, um, the park on the road. We have no idea who owns that house, who's in charge of it, how many people are in there, do they have all the things that are stated in here that they should have. We have no clue. So if we can get these people registered, that's that's part of all this. So 
what's going on. Also, you did not add in here, and I know I mentioned it was the insurance. Um, if you have an Airbnb, you cannot go under your, your homeowner's policy. You have to have a fire policy. If something happens, any kind of liability on your part, um, you're not going to have it with a homeowner's policy because they know you are renting. The, the state checklist has all of the insurance. Again, that, that to me, that was getting too complicated. Because it was, it, it was asking all these questions about taxes and a, a, a license. When the goal here is to have the make sure that, you know, I think Sam brought it up when he was here a couple weeks ago that, you know, did they have the fire alarms? Are these places safe and clean? And that's the goal. Um, there are, if you're going to rent, I know Mary probably knows this, if you're going to rent the state of Vermont, which you certify all, most of these things already. And then if you rent, rent through VRBO, they have. Insurance. Everything you pay, I think, is totally reasonable, except if you offer the course. That's a few seconds in and sort of that. Well, I, I think he, he wouldn't have an ordinance and wouldn't afford it. Um, well, I mean, we're in tax office, well, not in the village or anything, but out on the back roads. I don't know how many times in the middle of snow farm I've been out on one of these roads trying to plow. And I can tell you when someone needs their car on the road, I can get around you know, I'm the, and I had a bag the whole length of right over the road and almost no car. And I have no idea who the vehicle belongs to or how you get a hold of anybody. The state police isn't gonna help you. So I have to wait to find that road when they decide to get out of bed and go move their car. And that's happened for at least the last four hours. We've done that that day. That, that's that, that's that, something that, actually that, that's not it, that's something we can add in here. Yeah, there should be something that says a respect of local law and make two or three things that we're most concerned about. And, and all they're doing is making sure that their renters are aware. Um, we got to have a contact. I didn't get ready to out of bed. Well, that, 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 yeah, that is one thing that's on here. You have to, you have to have a, an emergency contact that's on here. If you don't, if you don't live here, that we will have at the town office. It's, it's become a bigger problem. And I think that all sounds reasonable, but along with that, I think it should be uh, health officer, fire chief, whatever. Uh, I, what I did, Rich. should start having a conversation at what, what I did it, it, with that was I, again, I just verbatim copied what Chester had already done, which is they had the health officer, or they had the police. I, we don't have one. Health officer, the constable, and the members of the select board. Can all issue um, warnings for violations of the ordinance. Yeah, whether it's a uh, health officer, fire chief, whoever you appoint to do it, in a capacity. I mean, this, this will take a lot of time. For first, well, and the to have. Well, like I said, and that's fine. If, if you have some kind of enforcement piece, I can understand it. Uh, if it's just another paper shuffling exercise, then what am I? There is, there is, there's fees involved if you violate it, yes. But again, it's not, it's only, that that person would only be, they're not going to go do random inspection to somebody's house. It's not an order. Well, if somebody yeah. calls up a complaint, then they go out and do something. And that's fine. Uh, if you're going to have the person fill out the application and say, yeah, this is all in line, then somebody should go out and let me see your fire extension. Let me see your. Well, that's uh, really what we're going to say. Well, that's what it won't happen. Well, we got to try. It won't happen. Maybe. They don't have the resources. But they, they're, that's what they're supposed to do. Yes. Exactly. And you may wait till someone calls in a complaint. Yes. At first, you said that it's easy to find out who these are based on listings online. Have you attempted to contact the host agencies to? See if they would let you know who lists with this one, who lists with Airbnb, who lists with VRBO, who lists, I don't know how many others. They're not going to get that information. American Valley probably has some of their own too. Morgan just went on VR. Like if anyone got a letter, it's because she went on VRBO and found the address. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you already have a creating a race without it. Not really. Well, I think, I think, hold on. <laughs> I think that's what, that's what that is. 
you've got some names and addresses, right? Right. That's, correct. that's, that's, but that's, I mean, that's how you know where to send the letters. Correct. But okay. it, it was it was just an it was just an exercise to find it. it wasn't, I'm curious how many how many there are within the confines of that. I think that's a reasonable question. How many? Um like 35, 35 37. Okay. Yeah. So they must file the secretary of state. It is the business. Oh, this public knowledge is not that we're scooping on that. Let's be right through what the secretary of Yeah, there's a that state checklist has a whole tax component to it. That is not on our checklist. I think it's a little more sympathy for the people that actually live here and try to pick up a couple of extra bucks versus someone that lives in wherever and owns Many. 30 things are probably innocent. I think I have a little more sympathy. I'd be a little more sympathized. I've, I've sympathized more with the people that. Are local and try to pick up a couple of extra bucks on the side if they're doing it legitimately. No, yeah. You know. yeah, but there's, there's another element to this whole thing, and that is we're, we're losing our community because um, a lot of these homes were either single families no. living no. or uh, second homeowners. No. So now we have second homeowners and they're renting the houses out. And um, it seems to be that the, the that every time a house gets sold, not every time, but a lot of times, it all of a sudden becomes an Airbnb. And and, and I think I, and that's that's a this is a problem that not only Tom Grafton is wrestling with, but the entire world is wrestling. Italy is wrestling with it. New York City is wrestling with it. All these other cities, because their houses for their people are being taken away. So you can't because. It's being bought up by out of shares. They pay a large amount of money and then they rent it out. So if, if, if somebody wants to buy it out, they're competing with that. I mean, Jennifer has, has, what is it, 15%? Of their I think house. they just banned, right? Yeah, but I mean, they have yeah, a yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. They just banned the short term rentals. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 I, I heard something about it. They put a moratorium on it. Yeah. New York City has too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, New York City uh, said that they have to have, have an area and have to live there. Seven seventy percent of them are now on a normal way to be there and be. So, so that happens. There's actually two sides that are pointed. They're not using the land of the surface, it's probably solar or anything else. So there's both, there's two sides. Well, I understand that. You know. but, but I mean, this, this is just. I, uh, there's not a vote here. This is just an introduction. Yeah. We would like to see comments from, from anybody who gives the moment. Um, and this process will continue. Obviously, we have to have a vote here. And yeah. have a this is just a draft. This is a draft. Um, there was a request by some of the members of the town to do something. So we're in a process of doing it. So uh, we appreciate your feedback, anybody's feedback on what you think. If anybody wants to, you know, look at a copy of the draft, just let, yeah, it's, it's, it's let Morgan it's, know and you can send it. Yeah. Do you have anything on there about like taxes? I I think it's a, no. but if someone's going to link with other taxes, do they actually be holding on? Um, That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Those are all things. I mean, you're yeah. yeah. that kind of thing. No, I, Think of one or two, so I think yeah. that maybe that could be something. I, 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 I try to keep it as simple Generic. <laughs> as possible. I didn't want to make it very complicated. So, but it, um, I mean, obviously, it's just the very beginning stages of this. So, anytime that everybody has, I'm very appreciative. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, 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 you have anything to say? Uh, not, we can just hold off, I think. Um, I do want to ask Mike, though. I sent you those forms. Are those easier than what we had before? Yeah. Okay. So we can go on forward. We can just use that. Yeah. No, I, I, that's what I thought. I didn't expect you. I, I didn't expect you to. But I just wanted to make, I wanted to, I wanted to talk to you and see if you thought they were better. Yes. All right, good. 
Did you get the email from uh, Pam? Yes, I did. Did you want to read that in this meeting, or did you? Oh, yeah. Yes, we um, put it out. I, yeah. I partly came to kind of support, obviously, and I don't think I think most of my Yeah. Name, but um, I just wanted to add a comment to you. Yeah, I'm glad you did this. I was going to bring it up. The, the, what they're requesting is that there be a hidden driveway sign on the south side of the bridge. <laughs> this is uh, on Townsend Road. Okay. Um, uh, they live um, next to Carol Lund and Charlie Booker. Yeah. And uh, they want to have a sign that says, um, um, you know, hidden driveway, uh, which shouldn't be a problem. Uh, they want they want the speed reduced uh, from forty to thirty five miles an hour, and they want a speed limit sign move further back, um, so that they uh, could slow down sooner. Then because it's right in the section there where it's open for Yeah, that's right in the inside. Yeah, it's just right outside fifty to forty. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it forty up until the bridge, right? And then it goes fifty right here. What's the what what else you talking about? And she's like, uh oh, she like four something instead of the right away through the Charlie Girls. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um if I can add just a comment so yeah. to um Obviously, if you've seen my or our, our family's letter, um, uh, it was read in one of the slide for weeks. You know, we're concerned about the same thing. I mean, if it was up to me personally, I would love to see any, like, the speed in town, you know, 35 and below everywhere, kind of like what happened to that. Mm -hmm. um, I personally don't see, I know everyone has, you know, jobs to get to, um, but it's just, it's really concerning, especially where you know our house is. Um, and we have two young kids. Um, and so I don't know personally being new to this or first time homeowners, I don't know what the process is for bringing that up. Um, if, if I may, to you, there's a just an idea from a report uh, from the National Transportation Safety Board. Um, and it kind of scared me out because doing my own research and it kind of just. Kind of freaking out, to be honest, I don't think it's um, so according to the Euro European Transport Safety Council, 5% of the uh, pedestrians struck by a vehicle at 20 miles per hour are fatally injured. This likelihood increases to 45% at 30 miles per hour and 85% at 40, uh, 40 miles per hour. Uh, the AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety similarly found that the average risk of severe injury to a pedestrian can increase from 10% at 16 miles per hour. 25 to 10.3 miles per hour, 50% at 31 miles per hour, and 75% at um, 39 miles per hour, and 90% at 46 miles per hour. Um, and that doesn't even take into account, you know, an hour versus a child. Um, to me, that's pretty scary. Um, I don't see any reason why people need to go more than 35 40 in town, especially considering um, the town, the chair recently put that, I think you got a copy of that morning mm -hmm. for the uh, speeding report. Yeah. Funny enough, the average speed was 40. There was uh, some spikes at 55, which is kind of tricky and busy, not high rate speeds. Um, and that report, uh, in terms of um, offenses that can be ticketed basically by the sheriff's office, that was assuming 10% over, uh, sorry, 10 miles per hour over the posted speeding rate. And the sheriff I spoke with admitted that he only he typically will only start getting people after 15. So I think Pam wrote that in the letter too, where it's like in the 50 zone, people are going to be going to 65 with no basically concern of being ticketed. Um 55 hours. So I don't, you know, I just want to bring that up. I want to see if we can maybe put that to the vote or something, but that's kind of well, well, I want to add on to Max's concern, you know, reiterate our previous concern. Policy. In my opinion, you can put all the screen signs you want. Of course. What yeah. is important? <laughs> Nothing that we can get through here to go on that way to finish the world does not go all the way on the map. Because the cop there 
on a regular basis. And that's what it's going to take to solve the problem of that. Oh, I need more surveillance from free policy. And once the word gets out, things will slow down. Mm -hmm. You can put up a hundred times, you can move more than one. Oh, right. I can see most of that too. Huh? Oh, hey. We're going to try to address that. Yeah, I'm going to try to address that. Yeah. But yeah. I guess my concern is like if, if that's the way to ticket people over a certain amount, and the effect financial is the injuries that you cause as an increase, you know, one, two, three, four miles per hour, you know, it increases quite quickly. So even if you reduce it to 35, they're only going to start ticketing at 50. I mean, that's still very concerning for us being so close to the road and having things open, but it's not, you know, 55, 60. Or 65 and 50 zone, and especially where that placement is of the 40 to 50, people see that in the distance, they're already speeding up. And you know, I, I won't point the figure to everyone, obviously, because on average, most people in town, especially, you know, lately too, I just you know I see people go on violence, but they good, you know, they're going at least 35, 40, you know, max. But then the odd outliers are just ripping it in a loud pickup, and that's probably <laughs> why I usually notice it. I just want to fill out. I might be able to buy their electric cars in the city, but they are going to get down with them. Where, where does it go? Where, where, where does it go? I just know who they're going to go. Where is it going? 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 Where is it
because you just can't go in there. It's not like putting the COVID on under the road. There's people's backyard, there's, there's all kinds of wires. And uh, so we're going to have to figure out where, the, first of all, located. We're going to have to send letters to the homeowners explain what it is. So this process is, is, is going to take some time. Um, but there's no rush to judgment here. I mean, we're not going to. No, I'm going to use not to sell any clothing focus. So it's just, it's just so that we have who's cool responsible and, and, exactly. and that's where it goes. So you have a date goal for when that letter is to be signed by? No. Um, not, not you don't have a goal for when that no, check not, mark is done. That. Okay. Well, I don't think you would treat the lawyers. Do you bring it up with the lawyers? No, we have to. We have to. We have to, we have to meet with the attorney. We have to get the surveyor. We have to locate the thing. And how do you in terms of the work? I mean, in terms of the point Don brought up about getting Women Foundation signature. Oh no, no, no. We'll be we'll be on him every single week until we get the phone. Great. So what's the goal of that that piece of this? My back would be a problem. You have, but you can work backwards from a date. So. Would you hope to decide by Christmas or I'm serious? I would hope that you get the letter within the next couple of weeks. Sure. They have a board of trustees meeting coming up. Well, he told, they've already approved it, so there's no reason why you can't. Yeah, we sent a letter last week saying, give it to us yeah. Yeah, today. <laughs> well, we have to we'll walk on over, but it'll get done. It's enriched on there. Anything else? <laughs> um, Charlie, Charlie Bonin had a comment. Okay. This the speakers are not working great, so hopefully I can hear him and relay that back. Go ahead, Charlie. Hi, thank you, Morgan. Um, I heard Seth, and Seth, are you saying that no longer is the water system a concern for the state? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying, Charlie, is we've asked about the charcoal filter that you've asked about. Yeah. And I specifically asked them the question, why can't why can't there be one at your house? Thank you. And they told me it's because you're not a full time resident. And then when I followed up and I said, is that because the filters don't work properly? Uh, if they're not used full time, it's because it's simply because he's not a full time resident. Then they just totally changed the subject and said, "Well, that person was speaking out of turn, and we don't. We'll have to get back to you on that." So, unfortunately, that's the answer that that Joe and I have gotten from these people on that issue. Well, then I appreciate very much what you have done because. That wasn't what I was understanding that was being said. And I'm very happy that the town has taken that position. And thank you both. And thanks, Joe. Um, my, my, I'm sorry to keep bringing this up, but my problem is with the state is they keep changing people. And um, I, there is a real issue surrounding the school. And there are monitoring wells around the school, and the standard has changed regarding PFAS. The state hasn't adopted the federal standard yet, but I'm sure they're going to do that. And that means that most of the wells surrounding the school are contaminated. I don't want to use that word, but I think that is the word with PFAS. And I appreciate very much the town going to bat for for my wife and I, and I guess for the rest of the surrounding homes. Um, but I, at this point, I don't know what to do because the the state is basically denying any coverage whatsoever as to this PFAS issue, which they say was generated by the school, and I. I'm not sure it's a great idea for this for the town to give up on this water system. Now, if that's if that's what I heard, I, I'm not sure it's a great idea because looking at this PFAS issue, there's a lot of wells in the town that could be failing. 
Yeah, and the, the, what they what the engineers have told us is that the, if you in place those filters at everyone's house, it it takes care of the PFAS. Right, right. Um, so that's why we're looking because the whole putting in a drinking water system is really beyond the town's capacity, and it's way too much. It's way too expensive as well. Um, well, I, um, but, the, but but the filtration putting charcoal filters is something the town could. That could that is something that could possibly be done. That's why we're still talking to them about that. Well, you know what? I'm not looking for the town to to be responsible for this. I'm looking for the state to be responsible for this. This is what the letter that came to me in 2018 said that they would do. And uh, uh, Morgan can show you that letter. It's there in the in the files because I've agreed to send everything I get from the state over there. And all of a sudden now they're not agreeing to anything. Um, and it's just it's 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 not a good issue for the town overall. This well situation. I appreciate everything that you guys are doing very much so, and I I'm glad that you're continuing to. To do the fight for us. Thank you. Thanks. Just for your own curiosity, well, black hole filter, they talk like an old old filter. I no idea. Filter. That's what that it sounds like. Tomorrow is the first, okay. Wednesday is the first meeting we have that they said to get back to. It. So, it sounds like something that sounded fairly easy to do. I think they are. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. They're talking about what I'm. Yeah, that's what it sounded like to me. She just said, yeah. it "Sounded like very easy and inexpensive, and it sounded like a uh, almost like a real solution." Uh, See what else we can do. The state was the one. The state came down to do it. We do all this testing as a pilot. Found out. Yeah, yeah I, I remember that. Yeah. But, but Charlie is right. Uh, they they want to retest all the wells in town because of the change of the standards. That they, they yep. the standards. Yep. The standards. And yep. if, if they do that, try to write it, there's going to be a lot more wells yes. that are going to be contaminated yep. with this PFAS. Okay. But that's something that um, we're not dealing with. That's something they're going to deal with. Right. All right, if we have nothing else, okay, the next regular meeting is November 6th here at 6 o'clock. And uh, we need a motion to go into executive session. Yeah, I'll make that ready. Personnel. Recording stopped. This meeting was recorded by Falls Area Community Television, located at One Hospital Court, Bellows Falls, Vermont. If you would like a copy of the meeting, our phone number is 802-463-1613 or email us at fact810 at gmail.com. Falls Area Community TV. Keeping government honest.